Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at explaining the fishbone diagram, also known as the Ishikawa diagram. No matter what line of work you're in, sometimes things go wrong. Some things that go wrong will be obvious and easy to resolve, while others will be more complex. And when these complex problems occur, a fishbone diagram can help you to think about and categorise all of the different factors that may have led to the issue. Now, by using a fishbone diagram, you're more likely to find the root cause or causes of the problem, rather than simply jumping into an immediate solution, which may later turn out to be incorrect. And in this way, you become much more likely to permanently resolve the problem first time. So in a nutshell, using a fishbone diagram can help you find the root causes of a problem. Now, a fishbone diagram takes its name from the fact it resembles the shape of a fish skeleton. The head of the fishbone diagram represents the problem you want to investigate. The backbone of the skeleton connects the spines, which represent the range of likely causes, and related causes are bundled together in two categories. Now, the most common way to create a fishbone diagram is brainstorming with your team. And when doing this, the categories can be useful as they focus the discussion on a particular group of causes rather than trying to consider all possible factors at the same time. Now you can use any categories you like. In manufacturing, it's common to use what's known as the five M's, and that stands for man, machine, material, method, and measurement. And in service industries, it's common to use the four S's, standing for surroundings, suppliers, systems, and skill. Now, the fishbone diagram goes by a number of other names, including a cause and effect diagram, Ishikawa diagram, and herringbone diagram. And all of those can be used interchangeably. So let's take a look at an example. So for this example, suppose you run a business selling products online and your website unexpectedly crashes. Now, as the website has crashed, your first priority will be to get the website going again as soon as possible. But once this is done, you decide to use a fishbone diagram to perform a deeper analysis of what caused the website to crash so that you can prevent the same problem from happening again. Now, to do this, you get the key members of your team together along with a fishbone template and brainstorm the potential reasons the website crashed. And there's four steps you need to do to use the fishbone diagram. So firstly, you state the problem, then you define your categories, then you brainstorm each category and finally, you analyze your results. So let's take a look at each step in a bit more detail. So step one, state the problem. So the first step in the process is to state the problem you wish to remedy. And this is usually done in the form of a question. So for our example, it will be, why did our website crash? And we update the fishbone template to reflect this. The next step, step two, is to define the categories you will use to guide the brainstorming. Now, these don't need to be set in stone and you can always create new categories or remove categories later as the brainstorming session causes your thinking to evolve. But for our example, we decide to use the following three categories. System, to capture causes associated with the system itself. Process, to capture any process issues that might have caused the website to crash. And finally, human, to capture any potential human errors that may have caused the website to crash. Step three is to brainstorm the likely causes a category at a time. Now, as you brainstorm with your team, you're going to generate a list of top level ideas that may have caused the website to crash. And it can be useful to dig deeper into each of these potential causes using a technique called the five whys. And the purpose of the five whys is to help you ensure you've uncovered the true root cause rather than just a superficial cause. And the technique is really simple. It works by asking why five times. So as an example, suppose we initially thought the website crashed because it ran out of memory. Well, why did it run out of memory? Well, because it was incorrectly configured. And why was that? Well, because the site administrator made a mistake. And why did he make a mistake? Well, he made a mistake because the development team hadn't provided adequate instructions. And why was that? Well, because they assumed it was obvious. Now, in this example, 
we can see that we asked why four times and we're then unable to delve any deeper. But notice that by using the five whys, we shifted our thinking that the website crashed because it ran out of memory to realizing that it may have been a human error. An engineer assumed something was obvious when to the site administrator, it wasn't obvious at all. Now, as you brainstorm all causes category by category, you update your fishbone template and it will end up looking something like you see here, except there will probably be much more causes. Now, there are a number of advantages and disadvantages associated with fishbone diagrams. So in terms of advantages, they are easy to understand and they show clearly the relationship between cause and effect. They help find the most likely cause of the problem. They can be applied to a range of problems and the whole team gains a better understanding of the issues. In terms of disadvantages, then the diagram doesn't help you prioritize causes. You have to do that for yourself. The output of the brainstorming is only really as good as your brainstorming session with your team. They can also become unwieldy to use for very complex issues. You can imagine where you may have hundreds of potential causes. It's very difficult to represent that graphically. And finally, you may waste time discussing causes that have very little impact on the problem. So in summary, the fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram was developed in the 1960s and provides a visual way to find the causes of a problem. It can be used in any industry and for many purposes, including identifying manufacturing defects and improving processes. And the process of creating the fishbone diagram can also help you create a shared understanding of a problem amongst the members of your team. So that's it from me. Really hope you enjoyed this lesson and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.